Hello? Hey. Welcome to the Nerd HQ, everybody. I am so tired, I can't even tell you. Uh, I can't believe you made it. Has everybody been enjoying San Diego Comic-Con this weekend? Are you just freaking exhausted right now? But are you too exhausted to see Jared Padalecki? <laughs> see, that's a very correct answer. That's fantastic. Um, uh, how many people have been to any of the conversations for a cause thus far? Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, you're about to hear what I've been saying, or if you have been, well, I can't even talk. This is ridiculous. Um, for those of you who have not been into any of these conversations yet, I just want to kind of give, get you up to speed. Basically, at the Nerd HQ, I just wanted to create a really fun space for you guys to be able to have an hour of Q&A all for yourself, not five or ten minutes tagged on to the end, but all for you, all so you can interact with some of your favorite celebrities and stars and, you know, whomever, just schmucks like myself. Um, and uh, so I, I reached out to, to, to my friends because we tried to put it together in three months. And I was like, please, please come and help me. I need, I need to make this legitimate. And I really want to raise awareness and I want to raise money because every, every penny that you spent on this panel to get a seat or to stand. By the way, any, anyone who's standing, thank you guys so much. Um, every penny that you spent goes right to Operation Smile. And we've raised $40,000. So thank you. You guys are awesome. You're awesome. And you are changing lives all over the world. Um, I have uh, I've not been one to give credits for anyone who comes out here because it's a waste of time. You already know what they've done. And, uh, and, uh, and that's why you're here. And, and you appreciate them and they appreciate you, especially this man. This man appreciates his fans so much. He goes to conventions all over the world and he spends time with you and he wanted to spend time with you today. Um, <laughs> So, without further ado, please give a warm welcome to the Nerd HQ, Jared Padalecki, everyone. I'm going to take this out of here. Put that right there. Sorry, I was so tired. Ah, you should be. Oh, yes, I love it. It's for the fans. Yeah. Check, check. That's for you. It was there. I, I figured why not. Hi, guys. Um, th this is, um, my mom is watching, so mom, this is milk. <laughs> San Diego's weird. They have, um, like, brown bottles for milk. So, no, I figured I've never done such an, an intimate um, chat with, with people and fans and um, I figured why not have a brown bottle of milk wrapped up in a napkin. <laughs> so, um, hi guys. First and foremost, I want to I want to mention um, Zach and Nerd, Nerd HQ and the bunch, and just say what a cool thing it is as a fellow actor um, to see somebody taking charge and, and doing something for for a better cause. And so I'd, I'd like to give a round of my own applause to the bunch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And the volunteers that I know have worked so hard to put this together. Yes, a round of, round of applause for the volunteers. Yeah, please. Um, I, feel like, I feel like Barack. Is this like a town hall meeting? It is a town hall meeting. I like it. Hi, guys. Um, uh, well, welcome. And I, I am not exciting unless I'm given something to say. So I, I'd like to go ahead and see if anybody has something to ask or yell. Yes, I see question that lets me know that there's a question. <laughs> there's a paddle, an auction. Is it Captain America, Chris? <laughs> Should have been Jensen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Chris is a buddy of mine too. So if he ever sees this, I love you. Um, hi. Hi, I'm Beth. That was high in, in stereo. That was like a, a dual high. Um, sorry. <laughs> oh, shut up. So my question is, will they be tying Sam's season two death at all with his season five death in Time in Hell? That's... <laughs> <laughs> Only on Supernatural do I guess you get a question about which death is this like? 
Um, is this like when you died season two or season three? And when you died in season four, was that similar to season six? Um, uh, the short answer is that I don't honestly know. What I've seen lately is that um, they, they do tie it in and they, they bring it on. What Supernatural, what our, what our blessing has been. And everybody, did people know the show? Or? Okay. That seemed arrogant, but that was an honest question. I didn't know. Um, so those who haven't seen the show and might watch it, cover your ears. Okay, so I died. Um, <clears throat> and again, yeah, how many times? That's like 10, a million. Oh, and thanks to the standing room people. Sorry, I feel, I feel so blessed to be a part of something that's for a good cause, for a great cause. Um, so the short answer is I'm still learning. It's good. And you mentioned the bottom thing. Zach told me, he was like, look, man, you're on your own. Don't hold the mic by the bottom. I guess there have been some mishaps, huh? People have died. People. <laughs> I'll hold it like this. There you go. Um, so, so bottom line, yes, they will, they will be tying in the, the mini Sam deaths. Um, that, I'm sorry, that feels goofy to say. But what the difference is this time is that Sam will remember um, what's happened currently, but also when the wall fell down, the hell wall. <laughs> yeah. If you were to read it on a transcript, like as an interview, oh, here's an interview that happened in San Diego. I think people would go, what? What is he talking about? <laughs> um, but we're around family, so. <laughs> I'll just chat as if nothing happened. <laughs> um, yes, they will tie it in. We're gonna, see, we're gonna see Sam play around with, he doesn't know what reality He's in. Um, I didn't say this at Comic Con, so y'all are getting secrets. Um, so we'll see Sam, not sure of what reality he's in, what, not sure of what year he's in. I don't want to say what season, because Sam doesn't know he's on a television show, <laughs> other than the French mistake. Um, but, but yeah, we'll, we'll tie that all in. And it's actually, I want to say again that we thank y'all guys for sticking with us, because for, for five years we went on a journey together. Um, that we only got to explore because y'all have been so so loyal and kind. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Um, that having been said, we explored that journey, and now we are are carrying forward. And um, and so we will see Sam. It, it's scary again. It's I, I actually read it, and for the first time that I can remember, maybe it happened on the pilot or season one or something. But for the first time I remember, I was I was scared. Jared was like, "Ooh, got chills." And, <laughs> It feels like um, it feels like it's a scary show again because we finally we've seen the Winchester brothers, Sam, myself, and um, Dean, the short one. <laughs> <laughs> one more aside, and then I'll quit it. But Jensen sends his love. He wanted to be a part of this today, but his niece and his brother-in-law are in town. They leave tomorrow, so they're yeah, they're with Shamu. Yeah, in a better in a better place. I'm just kidding. Um, so uh, Dean and Shamu say hi. <laughs> but um, we get to see Sam explore and be, and be worried. Because so, usually the Winchesters, they bear their burdens with, with, with pride and uh, gallantry and honor and courage and bravery. And here we see Sam like, oh, God. Oh, like, we see Sam scared. And so as an audience member, Jared, I guess I'm not, I guess, as a co-audience member slash co-star of the show, I was like getting chills when I read it. So, so yes, that was a really long way to say yes. I'm sorry, <laughs> I've wasted y'all's time. Yes was the answer, um, and I am first person to talk. Gets to ask another one. I, I heard a quack. Someone quacked. <laughs> they're quick over here. It's they're the, the duck door. in the second row. Yeah. There's a duck. It's an amazing. Go ahead, please. You know what? It, they're, it's like the, the silence and the, the darkness. They're like, <laughs> I've heard like nefarious laughter from the corner. So Yeah, pretty much. That's how it works. <laughs> Hi. Um, so what was your favorite season thus far to film? Um, my favorite season thus far to film, um, I don't want to dog any of the writers because the writing's been stellar throughout, but my favorite season um, was season four. Yeah? All right. No booze, no tomatoes. I appreciate that. And I don't, I can't honestly say just why it was. I mean, I wear a ring on my finger because I married somebody I met in season four. Um, so I don't know how much of me, don't scream at her. 
She's mine. <laughs> I bought her, and I'm keeping her. I'm just kidding. Um, so I, uh, I, I don't know how much of it is colored by the fact that I married um, um, Genevieve. <sighs> Sorry. Um, but I will say that I felt like that was the culmination of the original plan. That was the, that was the, the climax, the apotheosis. I learned that new word, apotheosis. That's good, right? <laughs> apotheosis. Um, I felt like that was, like, Kripke planned a five-year plan. And at first, here's a funny story that I don't know if I'll get in trouble for, but to hell with it. It's for charity. Um, so Eric Kripke, who created Supernatural, would always talk about this five-year plan. He'd say, we have a five-year plan. I need five years. The show needs five, Sam and Dean, five years, five years, five years, five years. And a lot of, have y'all, has anybody heard of the, uh, our five-year, how it was supposed to go? Only? Okay. The reason, cut the cameras. Um, <laughs> now you can keep rolling. Mom, hi, Mom. Um, so the reason it was a five-year plan is because we were on the bubble for a while. Now, for those who don't speak TV talk, which you shouldn't, but um, on the bubble means it doesn't know whether you're going to get picked up or get canceled. So <clears throat> one of Eric's things that he was doing is he was going, look, 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 just, just grab us. I need five years. You'll see. Just, just give me five years. And he kind of threw out a number, like five years. And he also had a plan in his head. Like, I don't want to make it seem like it was an accident. But we were just hoping to get five years. Like, we were really, like, praying and begging that the show would continue. There was a big mix-up. We started on Warner Brothers. Then CBS bought Warner Brothers and UPN and merged them. And then we were on CW. And we were like, uh, five years. Please give us five. <laughs> Hi, we're, we have ghosts and stuff. Give us five years. But so, so the five-year plan, I guess the law of self-fulfilling prophecies, it, it worked out like that. And so season four of five was very um, Sam-centric. And that sounds really arrogant. I don't want to mean like, well, season four was about me, so I like it the best. <laughs> but it was, it was really challenging. And I can remember more than a handful of times getting home and being like, man, I just, I gave everything I have. I gave everything I have to give. I don't know if I can give any more. Um, and then setting my alarm clock for like four hours later <laughs> like to, to go give more. And so I felt like I worked really hard, really, really hard on season four. Um, I hope it came across. Um, and thank you. I got three, three people. <laughs> I'm happy with three. I mean, they say... They say if you can make a difference for one, then it's worth it, and I believe that, but I'm happy with three, and then the, the, everybody else. Thank you. Um, but season, once again, I should, probably should have just said yes. <laughs> you gave me a great opportunity for a one-word answer, but I, I loved season four. I felt like the, the journey it took Sam through was, um, it almost bled over into my real life about learning and growing and developing as a human being. I didn't drink any demon blood <laughs> that year. Season five, and whew. <laughs> But um, <laughs> I, uh, it, it, I, I grew a lot as a, as a human being. And I don't know, I was 22 when I started the show. Last Tuesday, I turned 29. So I, uh, uh, thank you. I'm in my 30th year. I feel so old and sexy. I'm just kidding, I'm not old. Um, nor sexy. <laughs> well, I'm trying. Do you notice how I keep doing this? I'm trying to get some, some cat calls. I'm just kidding. So there we go. That, I'll take three. I'll take three. I got my three, so that's good. Um, so, yeah, season four. Sorry. Thank you. Long-winded. I see you. I made eye contact. Awesome. Yes. All right, next. I'm, just I'm sorry. I'm just running you all over the place. Next, I'm going here. Then I'm going there. Then I'm going here. Hi. My name's Joe. I'm Jared. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, when you and Jensen first met, was it a really easy connection as an actor, or did you two have to kind of work at it to get the Sam and Dean dynamic? Um, yes and yes, if that makes any sense. Um, when we met, we literally, I, I knew of him. I knew people that knew him. Uh, Riley Smith, who I did New York Minute with, which we, sh which we will not talk about. <laughs> Drop it. <laughs> you in the dark over there, you quit that. So Riley Smith, I, I did um, uh, New York Minute with, and he was great friends with Jensen. I had met other friends through him that knew Jensen, but I never met him. And I met him one day, <clears throat> and it was like, hey, hey, Jared, paddle like a Jensen. Oh, I, I know some blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. And then there was a knock on the door. We're ready for you. Okay, cool. All right, you ready? We literally went from there 
to two rooms over where 40 of the most powerful that I've ever been in front of executives for Warner Brothers um, Studio and Warner Brothers Network were sitting, auditioning us. The, the positive thing was we got there and they're like, listen, they want to test you for this show. They really like you. Usually when you test for a show, you get there and it's like five other guys and it's like Giorgio Armani model sitting there. Like, and you're like, I'm nervous, I'm scared. We got there and we were expecting to do, they call it mix and match. So like I read with you and then you read with him and then I read with him and then she reads with her and it's nutty. But we got there and we were like, I wonder who the other auditioners are. And we kept waiting and waiting and waiting. No one else showed up. And so we were like, that's probably a good sign. By the way, I'm Jared. Blah, 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 blah. They took us in there, had us read through some of the scenes. And one of the scenes was, um, I forget the words, but it's like, Dad loved you. I slept with a gun underneath my pillow. The scene that took place in the stairwell. The stairwell scene. Um, <laughs> and so that was one of them. And I forget the second. But they were like, okay, thank you very much. No one applauded or anything. It was very, like, stoic. It was like, oh, God. Um, they sent us out, and we sat there kind of for a couple minutes going, like, it was really nice to meet you. I hope this goes well. Um, if not, we should still grab a beer somewhere. <laughs> I just turned 22. I can drink now. Um, <laughs> milk. Uh, and um, they were like, okay, come back in, please. And we came back in, and everybody stood up and started clapping. And Peter Roth... Um, his Highness said, all right, guys, congratulations, you got a TV show. And that was that. And so we immediately had, the funny thing is that they, I don't know if they did it on purpose, but they immediately sent us into battle. They immediately said, y'all guys are in this room, platoon by yourselves, get to know each other, we're going to take you in for a fight, and then we'll send you back out with each other. And so we had that background immediately. It's like, listen, man, I got your back, you got my back, can I cry later to you? <laughs> like. Luckily, we didn't need to cry. Yeah, that was like later in the season, but um, we immediately had each other's backs. And, and he's, a, he's a dude from Texas who watches the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I was waiting for that, you know, that pregnant pause. Um, and so we, we bonded a lot of things, country music, and we were two Texas boys. That's right, yeah. Y'all are getting carried away. <laughs> Calm down over there. So we, uh, we just kidding, you can carry, I'm just kidding. Um, so we immediately had this, this bond. But as you know with any of your best friends or whoever you share a lot of secrets with in your life, you can share an immediate bond but still get stronger and stronger and stronger. So much so that during season five, uh, he was a groomsman at my wedding. Um, and that summer I was a groomsman of his. Like we just got close, you know? Yeah, I that was good, aw, that was good. <laughs> and it didn't even come from the dark, so, <laughs> so I'll take it. But we, we, we continued to grow and I think with any relationship, whether it's romantic or platonic or familial, um, I think the more you go through, the more highs and lows you see and come out the other side, the, the hi guys, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> haven't seen them in a while, um, but the, the more you come out on the other side stronger. So yes, yes, and yes. And now, <laughs> somebody from over there. Yes, I see you in the black with the hand. You with the hand. Oh, you have two of them. <laughs> well, you only showed one. <laughs> you I do poker. have two hands. Um, one of the things I love watching on the DVDs, both my husband and I w love watching, is the... Oh, you got a husband. Oh, now you're dropping the husband Sorry. word. <laughs> um, well, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Is the gag reels. Uh, do you guys do a lot of jokes for to each other on set, and what's the best one you prank you pull on? <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot of jokes. All right, here's... Uh, for those who haven't heard, Misha... <laughs> oh, no, boo. <laughs> Pff, woo. I'm just kidding, I love Misha. But he and I, um, we would always talk trash and this and that. And by the way, I've actually had to hold back with Misha and not play pranks on him, because he laughs worse than I do. Like if I laugh when, something, when someone makes a funny face, we were doing a scene the other day and it was so intense and so serious. And Jensen, I gotta find, how working at everybody? Okay, so Misha's looking at Jensen and it's very serious and intense and Jensen's looking at Misha. And Jensen goes like this. And kind of gives him the, the once over, and Misha busts. Five minutes. I'm not kidding you. Five minutes, like, all right, guys, take a break. We'll be back, because Misha's laughing, and he can't look at Jensen without, <laughs> without laughing. There's another one when Misha's in the ro uh, Ring of Fire, where Jensen and I both, we we're in the scene in the barn with him, and we're, like, making faces at him. Um, and he literally was like, I cannot do this scene unless Jared and Jensen are not on stage with me. <laughs> and so we walked out of the set, and he was like, I know they're still there. 
make them go outside. <laughs> so we literally went outside. And then Jensen and I sat there for like 10 to 15 seconds going <laughs> <laughs> And then we were like, all right, well this isn't fun because we can't make him laugh anymore. So we went back to our trailers and like 30 minutes later, the AD comes and goes, all right, scene's done. I'm like, scene's done, there was, oh, Jen Misha kicked us out. <laughs> So Misha actually kicked out Jensen and myself <laughs> from our show. Um, and I'll hurt him for that one day. Uh, but so we, we just laugh a lot. I mean, m more often than not, it's just kind of to keep, it's not a choice to keep the morale up, but there's no point. Like being here with you guys, we laugh, we joke about stuff, we ask funny questions and make fun of each other. And that's the point. No one wants to get there and just be so serious. And Kim Manners, uh, rest his soul, used to say, <clears throat> and it's very true as far as this TV show is going. He'd say, I spend more time with you than my wife, my kids, my dogs, my brothers, my sisters. If I'm not having a good time, then why do this? And th we kind of took it to heart. Um, and so we do. We have a good time. And every now and again, it costs us 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Hour, two hours, three hours. <coughs> but the point is, is that um, we... We have a family there, just like we do with a, a lot of faces I see are familiar, and I've seen you at conferences and conventions all over the world, and that's really awesome. Um, and that's the point, is you start a relationship with somebody, and you laugh, and you go through the ups and downs together, and you know that it's, it's, it's a give and take. I mean, I, I, I currently am the one on stage, um, but I wouldn't be on the stage if, if y'all didn't watch Supernatural. I mean, and here we have, as a group, uh, myself and all of y'all have come together to, to put some money together for a great charity. So there's something that happens when people have a good time together that um, something better is begotten. Um, and that's, that's where I am. I should have just said yes. Uh, season four, point to the ring. I, I'm going in the back. Yeah, I see you. Yes, please. Wait for your microphone. Haven't you learned anything? <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, what was your favorite hairstyle out of every season of the show <laughs> that you've had? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you even think I think about stuff like that. <laughs> what do you mean, like hairstyle for like... <laughs> what? Um... <laughs> Uh, let me let me answer it with first with a question. What was your favorite hairstyle? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I heard three boos. We we have a joke. Um, we have a joke. I'm, I'm a tall guy, um, as most of you know. And we have a joke that um, like instead of people saying like, "Hey man, um, there's something on your forehead," they go like, "Hey dude, there's something on your five head." So I've got a, it's good. Let's see, where, do y'all see a camera? Yeah, so that's like, that's a good, I mean, if this were an Arrowhead bottle, let's see. <laughs> that's like four creases of the Arrowhead bottle. Five even, for per head, one, two, three, four, five head. Um, so I did like season one. <laughs> there, there was, it wasn't arbitrary, the altering of it. Um, there is something about, <laughs> You know who else like season one? He stole my due was um, Justin Bieber. <laughs> but I can see myself right here, so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I liked season one because it was short, but now they figured, you know what? The reason Jensen has always had hair like he has, and I've always had floppy, foppy hair, is it's, it's on purpose. It's because, uh, in general, the general consensus is that older people will do something with their hair, won't be kind of like hippy-dippy, like, hey, man, I just showered, like, <laughs> what's up? So, um, so they started to style my hair, and as my, my forehead grew into a five head, they decided to, to show it to the world. So my favorite hairstyle was probably, probably season one. But it, it makes me very young. It makes me very, very, very young. When you have, I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on right now. <laughs> but 
That's good. Season seven. Season eight. <laughs> this is season eight, so y'all get a preview. Um, no pictures because it's copyright laws, but I'm just kidding. Okay, I'll do, I'll do one in the back. There are two hands, I see. Oh, you were right there. You're sneaky. I wanted to get okay. you to run, but you were right there. You were hiding. I couldn't see you. Okay, first of all, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, my name's Stephanie, and I'm asking a... I'm Jared. Hi. I'm from Texas, too, actually. Where? I'm from Corpus. Corpus yeah, girl. I was yeah. just in Corpus. I know. Okay, actually, my friend What you doing here, girl? <laughs> Okay, my, my friend sold you a fishing license. That's how I knew you were there. <laughs> I swear. She Your friend sold me my fishing license? At the Walmart. I didn't catch any fish. <laughs> Does she do rebates, Sorry. refunds? That was like 26 bucks. Sorry. I, All I, that I, happened is I cast my fishing line out, and I pulled the tug, and it was like three guys down. It was the <laughs> oldest, scariest fisherman you've ever seen. Like, young, pretty boy, doesn't know how to cast <laughs> it. <was> like, Sorry. <laughs> and my bait was gone. Um, okay. Tell her thank you, though. Okay, I will. Um, and I'm asking a question from a friend on Twitter, actually. And I was going to ask you this, too. Apparently, there was a rumor. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I get really nervous in lights and stuff, so okay. I don't want to say anything stupid. Too late, right? Yeah. Y'all can say it. I'm sorry. Okay, Stephanie, apparently, I'm so there, sorry. Was, there was a rumor. Zach? I heard something. What? What? What do I do? Oh, what no. happened? What did you, what did you how do? I, how do I get it to just <laughs> stay in one place? I don't know. <laughs> I'm listening, there. Stephanie. I think that worked. I think and that, now it's off. I think that, well, just because you, there, there. Okay. It's your biggest fan. You're my hero. Diss. <laughs> I always kiss my biggest fan. <laughs> just kidding. Thank you. Careful, what, careful what you're saying right <laughs> now. <laughs> you are my hero. All right, sorry, Stephanie, go ahead. Okay. So fishing licenses, yes. Yeah, but yes. not fishing licenses. Oh yeah, anymore. Corpus Christi. Yeah. Girl. Okay. <laughs> what you doing? You know who else? Selena. I know. Yeah. 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 A lot of noise from the dark area. Oh sorry. Okay, my question is from a friend on Twitter, and apparently I don't know if anyone else saw it. You were spotted at the TARDIS right before you came here. I was. And I kind of want. That's to from know Doctor Who. Who else knows Doctor Who? I didn't okay. believe it. Mark Shepard, I love him. He was like, you know, Doctor Who is much bigger than Supernatural. <laughs> I'm going to totally sell him out. I'm just kidding. I love Mark Shepard, but he was like, I'll take you to Doctor Who. And I was like, oh, cool. There's a Doctor Who. Stephanie, I'm so sorry. That's <laughs> fine. Tell your Twitter friend I'm sorry, but I was. Well, uh, Mark Shepard took me to the TARDIS. He said it was an exact replica. He opened the door for me. Yeah, we heard you were crawling in a TARDIS. Some of us couldn't believe you could fit in it. <laughs> I couldn't. No, I tried. Okay. But there were boxes in it of stuff. I don't know what else is in it. It okay. usually is supposed to be like three football fields, right? Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> I know. Like, I, 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 That's I, what she said. <laughs> I love you, Mom. Something... Uh, yeah, so, um, I kind of so I was too big to fit. Yeah. Is well, <laughs> I will have you know that Mark Shepard and I both went in there. Imaginations run wild. Concurrently, yes. Um, <laughs> no, we, uh, I, I was too big to fit in there. But that was because it was next to the Doctor Who exhibit and it had a lot of boxes of stuff. I wanted to go in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My question really was just if you watch Doctor Who, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to stay here with my biggest fan. Um... I actually, I've, I've not seen it. I'm going, I've downloaded it. I've downloaded it up until now, but I haven't seen it yet. I actually have not seen um, the last 10 episodes of season six of Supernatural. So, I know. Yeah, is it? <laughs> I bite my tongue. I've seen, um, I've seen French Mistake and Frontierland. Yeah, I watched those because I was able to watch them as, as one ofs. 
Um, but the final arc I haven't watched yet. So I will watch it um, because I, I'm certain that if I don't, Mark Shepard, God love him, will continue to tell me the plot every day I see him. So <laughs> I'd rather be able to like shut him up by knowing the plot. And, and when he goes like, well, you know, on my... On my on Doctor Who, I can go like, yeah, I do know. You said this, and you were in the TARDIS, and the TARDIS went to here, and <laughs> there were a lot of people, and magic. <laughs> so I will watch it. Um, all right, I'm going to go one more time over here. I see a camera in the air, or I see a hand with a finger down. I, I, did, I, I did see a hand with a finger down. I saw you first. Yes, that was you. Are you Ninja Stars? Yeah. Yeah, what's yeah. up, man? That Thanks for that question. We were like, we were ribbing Ben Edlund afterwards during our panel. Anybody see the panel? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, and we had the Ninja Star question. And so we, we went back to the green room. We were like, Ben, give us some Ninja Stars. Ben, <laughs> give us some Ninja Stars. That was like amazing. Like your, <laughs> your answer was amazing. That was rad. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, no, I forgot. All right, thank you. Okay, okay so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I remember what I was going to ask is. Um, you know, with with Sam, you know, he starts off as kind of like the good the the good brother, and then Dean's kind of like the hardcore brother who does what it takes. And then, sort of over the season, you kind of gradually switch roles or in a way, or maybe you take on more of Dean, and Dean takes on more of you. And I, I guess I was wondering. And I beg your pardon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. I really I I know that was not meant to be. I, I'm, I'm just I swear. Kidding. totally kidding. Totally kidding. Um, and I guess I was wondering. To me, I th I actually thought that the kind of the hidden switchover place was. Um, strange mystery spot, the Groundhog Day episode, because you actually experience what it's like to be without Dean. So I guess I was wondering if that had, had as much meaning for you as, as I always kind of thought it was, or if not, what was the episode where you kind of felt like you sort of switched over to darker, Sam? Okay, that's a great question. Um, I will say that there was something to be said for mystery spot. Um, logistically, what happened is we shot, yeah, that was a great episode, but we shot, it was also Kim Manners' directed episode, um, yeah, yeah, who was amazing. Um, and so we shot the pilot, had a few months off, shot season one, had a couple months off, shot season two, started season three, and something called the writer's strike happened. That having been said, yeah, yeah, boo, boo, writers, boo. <laughs> Don't watch this if you're a writer. Oh, I'm just kidding. I love our writers. Um, but that having been said, when they wrote Mystery Spot, it was written as a possible um, series finale. That was the idea, was that um, it's, possible, it's a possible shift of the boys and nothing. We didn't know. We didn't know if the writer's strike was going to last a year, two years, a day, an hour. And so it was written in such a way. That was the last episode we shot. Even though it aired before Justin Bellow, we shot it after Justin Bellow. So that was literally last day of mystery spot. We were like, all right, guys, um, I hope the writers come off strike, and I hope when the strike ends, they choose to pick us up, because we were still, like I talked about earlier, on the bubble. Um, and so that was a possible um, segue into maybe either a movie or something else, because we needed it to be a cliffhanger or, or a big enough episode to where it could, it, it could work as either an ultimate cliffhanger or as a segue into a movie or hopefully like, hey guys, pick us up again. Like, it was really good. Um, and so that was definitely an episode where Sam changed. I think, going back to my earlier question about my favorite season, I think it was manifested more in season four when we saw Sam really go like, I'm gonna make my own decisions. I'm gonna do what I think is right. And I'm gonna do this demon blood thing and this ruby chick. She's mine. <clears throat> um, and so my guess, I, I don't know if I can pinpoint an episode. I will say that uh, Mystery Spot, after Mystery Spot was done, we shot four more episodes, but the writers would have already been writing season four. Um, I think we actually got picked up. After the writer's strike ended, I think they picked us up for four episodes plus season four. So that when we came back, yes, that's correct. <laughs> it wasn't really a question. But so when I went off to shoot Friday the 13th, I knew I was coming back for season four of Supernatural, and the writers knew it writing it, and so they wrote, I think, Sam's big arc for season four. That's my really long, short answer. <laughs> Thanks for the ninja stars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back right here. Where's your microphone? Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm Jessica. Jeff. I have a kind of a question, like, kind of far back. but I just I'll have kind of an answer back well, for I just, you. I just want to know, what was your favorite moment working on Gilmore Girls? <laughs> 
<laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what do you mean? What was that? <laughs> My favorite moment working on Gilmore Girls. Wow, that's going way back. I'm 29 now. Um, can I can I can I tell you what my favorite moment <laughs> of you working on Gilmore Girls was? It was Jared Padalecki beating me out for that role. No. Oh, it's true. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be yours, and you did fantastic. And I'm still bitter. Thanks. <laughs> What was your favorite moment, Jared? <clears throat> Beating you out for the role. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. You would have been tremendous. I, don't, I, I auditioned for it. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't even think I ended up testing for it. But I remember hearing that Jared Padalecki had gotten the role. And then we ended up playing Is that when you made the voodoo doll? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, no, but then we ended up meeting Well, you did all right. I, <laughs> I think I've done okay. You're on a I've massive okay. show on a huge network. Uh, um, well, thanks, right. buddy. Yeah, um, that's really funny. Yeah. I didn't know that. That having been said... <laughs> In all seriousness, I want to say my favorite moment on Gilmore Girls. God, that was going way back. Um, do you have one? <laughs> Fighting Tristan, I think. Oh, yeah. You know what? Okay, here's your answer. This is going way back. I liked the season finale when I drove the truck to Chilton. Is that the name of the street? The, isn't that a cheese? Still, that's what I said. <laughs> Don't objectify me. I'm just kidding. So that or, um, or the Jess Dean fight scene. Yeah. That I liked because Milo's a great guy. He's a buddy of mine. But he, um, he and I had this massive, massive um, fight scene to film, and I had just hurt my hip. And I literally, literally, when they'd call cut, they would bring crutches to me to walk up because Jared was hurt. <laughs> yeah, Jared was hurt. Jared was shooting MacGyver and hurt himself. Um, yeah. Whoa, what are you talking about? Get out of here. <laughs> Calm down over there in the dark. Um, so I'd hurt myself rappelling off a cliff from MacGyver, and I was so hurt that I was on all sorts of like um, hospital drugs. Yeah. <laughs> and milk. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but yeah, probably those two things stick out in my mind. Thank you for your question. Um, I'll go back to the dark, because I see a paddle of Chris. Should have been Jensen. <laughs> oh, you don't even, you, you were faking me out. You bluffed me. <laughs> she bluffed, okay, fine. Oh, I see. Hi, I'm Liz. Hi. Um, you film in Vancouver. And yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, to the. <laughs> the Vancouver Canucks were actually just robbed of a Stanley Cup title. And. Hey. Oh, yeah, fight. We can get a fight going oh on my here. God. <laughs> this is gnarly. This is gnarly. Zach, turn the cameras. Turn the cameras. <laughs> Um, do you follow hockey up there at all? I know it's pretty big in Canada, but. I. Um, I I follow hockey enough. I, I, am, I am a fan of hockey, let it be said. I didn't grow up with hockey, so I don't watch it religiously. Um, I was out of the country when um, Vancouver, the city of Vancouver decided to flip over police cars and stuff. Um, Y'all remember that. But um, I do watch hockey. I've been to a few games, um, and I enjoy it a lot. Uh, but I, I don't really. All I know is that one time I was at the, you know the Sutton Place in Vancouver, the hotel? That's where I live with the, anybody in Vancouver? Okay, the, the Sutton Place is where they send all the actors to go shoot TV shows because there's like an apartment side and a hotel side. So there's room service and a bar and stuff. Um, and where was I going with this? <laughs> so there's a bar and a thing and hockey. Hockey, yeah. Yeah, I like hockey. Um, no, I was at the Sutton Place for a, for a, uh, a, a Sunday buffet. Or something. My family was in town. We were for, like, going for a buffet on the Sutton Place. It's a good buffet, chocolate and stuff like that. Um, and there was a girl next to me who, no exaggeration, may I open this? Go ahead, it's for you. <laughs> it's good. She was probably five foot three, and this, was her, and this was her wedding ring. I mean, it was like, a, it was like the Clockman Diamond on her ring. And I remember being blinded and kind of going, what in the world? And then um, the hostess came up and went, <clears throat> Mrs. Luongo, your table's ready. 
I was like, oh, Roberto Luongo, the goalie of the Canucks, it was his wife. And I was like, way to go, Roberto Luongo. <laughs> Make me feel really bad about myself. Um, but that's, that's my best Vancouver hockey story. <laughs> I should have just said yes, huh? <laughs> Y'all tricked me over there in the dark. Um, I'll go back over this way. Um, I see gentlemen in the glasses. You keep hiding on me. I'm trying to make it much more miserable. Like, I want to see you crowd surf to the next. <laughs> I'm Bob. Nice to meet you. Jared. <laughs> um, my wife and I are big fans of the show. And my uh, wife and you? I'm a wife. Wait a second, and Bob. And your wife, too? Wait, you're your Bob? <laughs> where, where? Who's Bob? Uh, actually, my question is, uh, what's it like to be in episodes that are directed by Jensen? Okay. And, That's a, if, and if so, how is it being directed by Jensen? Um, it's great. I mean, touching back on earlier where I talk about how we're such great buddies, um, he's a really close friend of mine now. And so he also, he and I have been through, through a lot together, through crazy highs and crazy lows and just the mundane existence of reality. Um, that having been said, we know how to talk to each other. So we can talk to him as a friend. And also, I don't know, Zach, you answer. Do you have, do you have actors that direct ever on Chuck? I, I, I've directed a couple episodes on Chuck. <laughs> Amazing. But that, have you ever been? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call a trump card, ladies and gentlemen. No, do you, have you ever been directed by an actor, though? Um, yeah, well, you know, we've had, uh, I feel like I should, um, hold on, I'm just going to step up here with you. Yes, please do. <laughs> Thank you. This is my fan, though, so please I went, don't. No, no. I would, I would never touch your fan. Thank you. I've kissed it. I have my own fans. <laughs> um, there are the and some of them are here now. Um, I went barefoot as I came back. I say. It's kind of nice. It's liberating. Um, no, we, uh, yeah, there's been, we've had a lot of, have you ever, uh, we have directors, uh, our directing producer, Robbie Duncan McNeil. He's, he's kind of like. Y'all stole Robert Duncan McNeil? <laughs> Dude, not, he did not. skin. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to get into it. Y'all stole Robbie? What? Yeah, what? How dare you? Well, you know. Dang. We were that hit show Good on a big network television. You know what I mean? That's, that's what happened. It, it was a steady gig. Um, oh, please. Oh, please. You open this camera. I'm, I'm, playing, I'm playing the bullied card right yeah, now. Yeah, do it. Do it. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, guys. Zach, Zach, please stop. Stop hiding behind the chair. You could beat the crap out of me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Robbie, uh, you, I, I, are any of you guys Star Trek fans, Voyager fans? So uh, Robbie was Paris. Robbie was, you know, he, he was Tom Paris. And uh, so he came, well, he was also in Masters of the Universe, if you guys remember that little gem. Uh, and how could you not? How could you not? Dolph Lundgren? Oh, come on. Uh, all right, one Dolph Lundgren fan. Do you <laughs> Dolph Lundgren was on Chuck. It was so ridiculous. It was awesome. So... Because I got to bring it back to Chuck. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so what was anyway, the character's name? Robbie. What was that? No. I don't know. Uh, so, so Robbie, Avi was. You know, he he had a, a, an extensive acting background, and uh, I find I find you know, look, directors come from all different backgrounds, as you know. Some of them start uh, as DPs, some of them start as as PAs, and they work their way all the way up, and uh, and ADs, and there's all kinds of different paths to take: writers, producers, and actors. Um, and I think they all have their different strong suits. Uh, I really love uh, directors that came from an acting standpoint or an acting background because they get us. You know, they understand the, yeah. the ups and downs of the journey that we go on, and they know how to speak to us in certain ways that other people might not. Um, but not to say that other directors aren't solid and awesome and all that, but right. we've had a couple. Uh, Jay Chandra Sakar of Broken Lizard yes. and all that. He's coming down. <laughs> yeah. I'll right. let him know. Uh, that, that you love him, uh, but he he's also done some episodes with us. So uh, and I look, I find the directing my cast members on Chuck is both incredibly fun, but also very challenging because because we know each other so well. I may, I, I, maybe you can speak to this, and right. then I'll I'm gonna get off the stage. Uh, Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Uh, watch out for that step. That yeah, it's a doozy. <laughs> yeah. um, they put white tape around it so you would Just to make sure. Just to make sure. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it, is a <laughs> it is a challenge. It is a challenge because you are so close and you are such good friends. 
and you like how do you be like so listen Josh this is what I need you know you can't you can't do that and plus you know you've been doing it for years so what you can't reinvent the wheel you want people to do what they do uh, so I could imagine there's there's a definite dance that you guys have to do as being yeah. very good friends and co-workers and you know what the, maybe the difference is for us was that he had been my co-star for so long so that because when we would do if if we're doing a scene together and we've done it for years then even as an actor, you're going to go like, hey, man, um, give it to me so I can give it to you back kind of thing. Like, really, like, I want to, like, uh, Sam uh, Sam breaks at the end of the scene. So, like, prod me, goad me. And so we had talked to each other as fellow actors for so long. Not just uh, in what he said about actors, and Robbie Duncan McNeil had directed one of our shows. We loved him. He was a he was an ex-actor, current actor, but he, he now is doing most of the directing. But I love the way they understand acting because they won't say something like, that was good. Um, maybe kick up the energy. Kick up the energy. Like, am I like whizzing my pants or like? <laughs> do you want me to shift or like giggle? Do you want me to like have a tick? Like, what do you? What, what does kick up the energy mean? Whereas Jensen would say something like, "Hey man, um, remember Sam and Dean have one hour to get from here to there and then come back." And so, just something that little. He's not like, "Listen, man, be more good, less bad." That's that's my favorite note. Suck less. Yeah, suck less. Suck less. <laughs> yeah. That's the best. Suck yeah. less and more good, less bad are probably my favorite. But he he was able to speak to me as an actor as we had in the past. So I really enjoyed it because he's such a close friend of mine, I guess, and a fellow actor that if he would say like, "Hey man, um, Sam just found or Chuck just found out he is his demon blood," you know, then you're like, "Oh yeah," like something that. Stop with the spoilers, he just Jared. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Yeah, guys, cut, rewind the tapes. Um, so for me, it was it was actually it was actually great. So now you have two actors quoting how directors are. Thank you, Zach. You're welcome. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Um, I'm gonna go with the red band on the right arm because you had two hands up, and yes, <laughs> she had both hands up. That was commitment. Hello. Okay. Hi. So I was watching the gag reel. And I saw that you do Blue Steel. Can you do your best Blue Steel for us right now? God. Well, let's, let me, let me get my season. You're beautiful. Was that you, Bob? All right, I, I'm going to try it. It's embarrassing because I tried to use it on Zach. It didn't work, so I. <clears throat> it actually did. Oh, that's so sexy. <laughs> I gave a little extra to the camera. Yeah. It, it reciprocated, so I felt it back. So <laughs> thank you. That was humiliating. Thanks a lot. Um, I need more milk. Um, right here in the front with the red headband. I'm going with the red band on the arm. What is that? If that says, like, I hate Jared, then I'm really going to be. Uh, hey, I'm Alana. Uh, right. So it recently you were, I, I saw a poll or something where they said that you were uh, the actor we most wanted to see uh, become big in films. And, really? Uh, yeah. I voted. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alana. <laughs> um, I was wondering if film is something that you really... Did they specify what kind? It wasn't like stag film or something. What? No, I think it was like they it said... It wasn't like snuff film? <laughs> it was no, no, no. I think it was something like... Romantic comedies and then action films. Oh, rom com. Epic, epic. Or hero. act. Oh yeah, you know. I just learned rom com. Sorry, <laughs> I say that way too much for comfort. I'm proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was probably a, that was probably a valid question. I'm being a jerk. No, I'm w wondering what you think about that. You know, is film something that you really aspire to? I think to we have some smart people voting. Is what I think. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I um I I would love to. Um, the short answer is. Uh, that's rad, A. The next short answer, two, is that um, uh, I'm, in a, I'm in a great position right now um, where I'm, I'm a part of a show that's, that's um, doing a lot of great things. I feel so comfortable with Sam Winchester. I feel like I see familiar faces that I've seen in four different countries. You know, like, I'm, oh, hey, guys, like, how you been? So it's a cool position that... I'm in where I've had a lot of people say a lot of meaningful things like, hey, this is 
this has meant a lot to me. This is I've watched this through middle school and high school, and you're like, wow. Like I remember middle school and high. You know, like I, I, it's a really cool spot. And I'm also being a Texan. Where's my other Texan? Uh, I'm also fiercely loyal, sometimes to the point of kind of cutting off my nose to spite my face. And I wouldn't, in a million years, um, leave Supernatural if Supernatural wanted me because it's done a lot for me. You know, it's introduced me to my wife. Um, so, <clears throat> on that note, when, Super when Warner Brothers comes back and says, like, hey, um, are, are you willing to do another season if, if we want you to another season? I say yes, because it's, it, the, the reason I am here right now is because you don't want to talk about the show. So, I'm not going to, I'm not stupid enough to go, like, <laughs> oh, God. I'm David Caruso. I don't need. <laughs> Caruso is watching this. Can you <laughs> we have time for two more questions. Can you rewind the tape? Two ah. more, and Jared, two more regular answer questions. Goddess? <laughs> so yes or no. Um, that having been said, I would love to one day do movies, just to finish up. But right now, I'm having a really fun time doing a little show called Supernatural. Yeah, thank you. Um, I can't choose this. I'm, I'm going to go to my, my boss to choose the, uh, the questions. Uh, come back to the dark side I just heard. Uh, All right. I'm a Jedi, honey. Sorry. Uh, not, not that I don't appreciate a good Sith. Calm down. Uh, so, oh, you are just going out of control right here, aren't you? Okay, who's got the best question in the house? Just the best, just the absolute. Well, that's I'm statistical gonna, impossibility I'll, 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 for them I'll, all to have the best question. I know, I know. No, you'd be surprised. I've asked that before, and you see like five hands go, oh, I don't think I do. I don't. <laughs> it's like, have a little confidence, people. I'm going to go with you because it looks like you are either tattooed or something on your arm that looks awesome. Dr. I'm sorry? Dr. Who's Oh, it's a Dr. Who's sleeve. That's very appropriate. Microphone, please. Yay, hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Jody. I'm Jared. <laughs> Jared, oh, okay, hi. Have you ever been in the TARDIS? Uh-uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so my I know somebody who knows a guy who... Oh. My question is, um, in The French Mistake, was it hard playing yourself? Yes. <laughs> All right, how was that, Tej? Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, it was, because we also wanted to... We didn't want to truly play ourselves, nor would we probably know how to. So we wanted to make fun of ourselves and the, and the business and just everything in general. Um, the most difficult part, God, this is going to sound really bad. What, I don't know if I should answer. I kind of already. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, it's for charity. <laughs> getting guilt trip. It's for charity. <laughs> this is going to sound, let me, give me like a few minutes to answer the question after I say the, what I'm about to say because it sounds really bad. But the most difficult part was doing the bad acting scene. Now, I'm, I don't think I'm a good actor, but that having been said, to, to act poorly, if you talk to people who know acting, um, Acting simplified is thought, and if somebody's thinking, they're kind of acting as opposed to just doing. You can't really get, I don't want to say a good actor because it seems like I'm implying that I'm a good actor. I don't want to, myself excluded. Jared, you're a good actor, buddy. Well, you're a good actor, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the risk of, oh, sorry, no, don't do that. God, thank you. You're a good actor. You're just a jerk. <laughs> um, so anyways, if you have somebody who's an actor and who's even maybe a professional actor who's acted for a long time, then telling them to act badly, it's still not bad acting. But I want it to be really specifically like robotic. And so it was so difficult. I was sweating. I get sweaty when I get nervous. It's a really bad quality. Um, and so I was like so nervous. I was like, guys, I, I need a little bit because to kind of act badly, you're still kind of thinking and processing. Be like, bad acting doesn't think and process. It was nerve wracking. <laughs> um, thank you for giving me a chance to backpedal out of my answer for charity. <laughs> um, but it, it, was, it was very difficult, but it was a lot of fun because the whole idea was, we've done a few episodes, like the real Ghostbusters and 
changing channels and now we've done the French mistake where it's really a shout out to our supernatural family as we call y'all if y'all are willing to be some of the supernatural family. But I'm serious, that's how we refer to you. We're like, hey, this was one for this. I think when they called, I think Ben Edlund, Eric Kripke, and Sarah Gamble called and they're like, hey, listen, we want to do an episode. It's one for the supernatural family and you're going to play yourselves. And we were like, uh. <laughs> but here's the cool part is that during that bad acting scene, it was Jared and Jensen playing Sam and Dean, playing Jared and Jensen playing Sam and Dean. <laughs> so I got to walk away saying that. So thank you. And for the last question, Big last, L. Okay, well, I did go dark side for that, even though I can't believe it. Which I means you have to go straight to the spotlight. I got to go straight to the who's, spotlight. Who's lit the brightest and probably been the sweatiest other than myself? Yeah, you probably are the sweatiest. I, <laughs> I mean, not as sweaty as me, but yeah. Yeah, well, hey. Uh, oh, gosh. The one sitting next to... Oh, wow. Well, you got a group effort on that one. So yeah. next to Bob guy. Girl. girl. Oh, next to Bob. Girl. I heard the guy standing... I heard that, too. I heard the guy standing next to Bob. And I was yeah. like, I don't see a guy standing next to Bob. I see a girl sitting next to Bob. <laughs> it's my right. wife. I talked to my wife. Uh, it's my wife. It's, a, it's the last one. It's the last one. I'm sorry. It's the last one, but... But I make, make it know. great. Everyone's expecting it to be great. Well, I want to know how you met Zach. Oh, you want to know how Jared and I know each other? Yeah. Oh, I bet well. you do. <laughs> the, the, the question was, who, which TV actor would you like to see in a snuff film? And well... <laughs> it was actually a Russian bathhouse. And... Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I'm sorry? On Avenue B? Oh, from what? That's deep. That's I don't. It's like Inception deep. You're like, are you, are you trying to someone plant spin something a top. in my spin head a top. right now? Someone spin a spin top. Spin a top. So, are we still <laughs> here? Right now? Um, no, I think I believe it was. We had mutual friends. We both played basketball, and uh, and we had mutual friends in L.A. And they were like, Hey, I heard you play basketball, and I was like, Yes, I do. And they said that I, you know, I play in this gym, and we just kind of rent out this gym, and a few of us in the industry all go and 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 play hoops. And I said I'd love to do that, and so I showed up and. I believe it was your manager and yourself and a few other guys. And it was when you were still doing Gilmore Girls. So, uh, so I was really bitter. I was really, really bitter. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to see who's playing hoops. Oh, we're going to see. Is that why you kept fouling me? I, I fouled the crap out of you. He was kicking. You don't I, kick in basketball. <laughs> you do if you're trying to get somebody's job. <laughs> And uh, then we saw a soccer game in England. And then we did. Actually, yeah. That's, so we had kind of, that's how we met each other. We, had we met were acquaintances. But then we did. We ended up doing a, um, it was actually the year of the writer's strike, the ominous writer's strike. Yes, and, and because we had finished kind of early that season, uh, we had wrapped up and we were available to go do international press for Warner Brothers. And because we're both Warner Brothers shows, um, uh, it was myself and, and you and there were a few other Warner Brothers talent. And uh, oh, Alex O'Loughlin was out there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, ooh, I'll pass on that love to him as well. Some of the I'm sure he's enjoying guy. Hawaii right now. Uh, but, uh, but we really wanted to go. I was dying to go to a real live like English football game. Like I really wanted to go to an English football game. We because saw Tottenham play Arsenal. Yeah, we saw Tottenham play Arsenal. Remember they had to get everybody was, else out? Yeah, it was a semi-final game. We were in a White, White Hart Lane, I think is where. What, what's that? White Hart Lane, right? And I love Y'all are nuts. The Brits are in, in force. Nuts. So 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 we're so they're telling us we're in this van and we're driving out there and they're like yes we're going to it's really special it's really special it's a, it's a semifinals game between Arsenal and Tottenham and by the way they're arch rivals and we're going to Tottenham Stadium and you're going to sit in Arsenal section <laughs> which is cordoned off with security guards it's and they don't serve you alcohol or milk yeah <laughs> So they yeah, didn't. no, they didn't. They didn't because, as you guys probably know, especially you, you Brits in the crowd, you yeah. know, uh, uh, English football is gnarly. It is gnarly, and there's a reason why you're called hooligans. And you know, in America, our football, like we all sit together, we mingle. You can have Bears and Packers fans somewhat near one another, but it, friendly no. trash. <laughs> um, but in England, you just you can't do that. You just can't do it. So. White Hart Lane, this is like big, you know, big, big stadium, and it's all, it's, it's Tottenham, 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 and then it's a little teeny corner, it's Arsenal, this teeny yeah. little corner. Oh, yeah. And we're sitting there, it's like six of us Americans, right, all at our first football game. 
being hated by being the rest of the stadium. Literally, our lives oh. were being threatened. They were. I saw. I saw guys going, "You wanker! You wanker! I'm gonna kill you, mate! You're gonna kill you!" I'm like, I'm like, God, I should have worn a shirt. You're like, dodgy. Gonna, I, Someone call me dodgy. They call you dodgy. Yeah. Well, you are a bit dodgy. You're I'm awful. not gonna lie. You're. I'm You're an awful dodgy, dodgy bugger. <laughs> You're a dodgy bugger. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you, you, were you trying to get us killed? And anyway. they kind of push at you. There were literally security guards on the steps. Yeah. So that the people, there was a rope and security guards where you were like sectioned to your seats. Like, eh. But the chants, I would say that the chants were the best part about the whole thing because American sports need that. The chants in, Amer in British football and in English football, I, which I c could barely understand half the words. I would just like, They chant everything. Just go with it, go with it, go with it. <laughs> blend in, blend in. So the, so, the, so the long and short answer is we met playing basketball, but we solidified our friendship just trying to stay alive at a football game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are. Jared Padalecki. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah, I was going to take pictures real quick. Hey, that's, that's my fan. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to fondle it. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do the nice, awkward, take a picture time. We're going to start looking this way. Give do you guys I, a little option. Oh, do I need a Christmas sweater? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. I'm doing that next year. Some of you are just taking pictures and judging. <laughs> you're not even taking pictures. You're just looking. You with the hand near the nose. <laughs> too stretchy. Too stretchy. <laughs> to the dark side. To the Sith. I can't do the intersect face. I just look like I'm taking the crap. It's What's that face? It's I, I do this weird. Oh, yeah. yeah it's I can't. That's the, the crap face. Smaller. Oh, that was, oh, that yeah, was yeah. insane. <laughs> that was guys, smoldering. I, oh, d come on, baby. It's all about the smolder. Uh, guys, Jared, Jared is going to go take a little breather, get, get the schwitz off, yeah. drink a little more milk, yeah. and, uh, and he's going to be uh, ready for you guys in a signing in just a second. Yeah. But one more time, let's give it up for Jared Padalecki. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, brother, see you outside? Thank you. He gets two mics now. So listen. Jared Padalecki. Um, we're going to give Jared just a, just a little bit of time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I felt so much better. Um, hey, so uh, 